Am I a good candidate for double eyelid surgery? I have a mono eyelid and use liquid glue. I use that double eyelid liquid glue and it's been almost two years now, even though I know it's not good for my eye. Please answer me as soon as possible. Thank you for your question. You've submitted a single full face photo and you're asking if you're a good candidate for eyelid crease surgery and that you've described that you've, been, you've spent the past two years using uh, a glue to create the crease even though you're aware that it's not the best thing for your skin. So with the, the photo you submitted it appears that you're very young and just to answer the question on whether or not you're a good candidate is really more of an anatomic question and I'll share with you my approach when I meet patients like yourself in my practice. I'm a practicing cosmetic oculofacial plastic surgeon in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and a particular area of specialty in my practice is Asian eyelid surgery. So it, you've probably done a lot of research and you've learned that approximately 50 percent of people of Asian origin have an eyelid crease while 50 percent don't and it's been my observation over many years of doing this that there are people who have variable levels of creases as, as well. There are people who have multiple folds or um, one crease is defined and then there's several little folds next to it. So there is some variability there. So when you don't have an eyelid crease Essentially, the anatomy that is necessary to exist in order to create an eyelid crease that you're trying to mimic with glue and another popular alternative is tape um, is to try to create some stiffness between the eyelashes and the platform of the eyelid where typically you'd apply eyeshadow and to try to force the skin to fold in in a certain way. What's absent for those who don't have a crease are these fibers that come off of a muscle called the levator muscle. The, the levator muscle is like the word elevator. It lifts the eyelid. And when there are connections between the levator muscle and the skin, it creates a crease. So in the decision-making process when someone comes to our practice, we decide based on certain basic anatomic issues whether or not they're a candidate for a crease and then what type of surgery is optimal for them. There, as you probably are aware, there's incisional uh, surgery and then there's non-incisional surgery. And although both procedures still involve making openings, essentially an incisional surgery me uh, implies that there is a need to remove addition, extra skin as well as often the case to address some fat which is interfering with, this, with the muscle's ability to create a connection. And so whether it's the, the excisional uh, approach or non-incisional approach, um, you're still, you have to make a connection between the levator muscle and the skin. So, when we make this de uh, determination, we also look at the desired uh, type of crease. There is two types that when we're looking at the relationship of the epicanthal fold or the little web that is natural in Asian eyelids, there are those who have a more subtle type of fold and there are more who have a, have a more defined fold. And so we call it a nasally tapered fold or, or a parallel crease. And what I try to do is determine what nature would have created if that was the case, um, that the person was going to be born with it. And usually what I do is I just kind of place either a Q-tip or a, a, um, a, a special eyelid crease instrument that pushes the skin inward and it almost folds in as if nature would have created that. And I usually advocate for something that looks very, very natural, as if you were born with the crease. So to answer your question, I believe if you have been successful with the, with the uh, glue, as many patients who come to us do first is they try tape of different kind types and what I will I often do is I'll have them actually wear the tape and it gives me a guide to where I should place my stitches or how high 
they like their crease. If that's been the case where you've been satisfied with that, then you are probably a candidate for surgery. The question is, is when is the right time for you? And to determine that, you have to meet with cosmetic surgeons who perform this type of surgery. The approach that we have in our practice is we do these procedures under local anesthesia with light intravenous sedation. That means that you're in this twilight state that allows us to make the areas numb and you'll be comfortable. And then we'll do the procedure and actually sometimes have you open your eyes to see how things look and whether or not these connections are being made effectively. Patients never feel any pain, but they're just aware that I'm asking them to open their eyes, and it sometimes helps to have that additional information as we're doing the procedure. When you're young and you don't have extra fat or a need to remove additional skin, then a non-incisional procedure is usually the preferred method. Um, it avoids um, any long incisional uh, type, of, uh, uh, type of scar and it allows for minimally minimal trauma and minimally evasive and it's often associated with the faster recovery. So again, I think that you know, we, we, my approach for a typical young Asian patient without extra fat or extra skin would be a non-incisional approach. But I think that it's important that you meet with doctors and discuss your, the plan and the approach and the style in which you'd like the crease to form. And once you're comfortable with that, then move forward. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you for your question.